Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, your Norwegian American YouTube shop teacher. Welcome back to the shop. Now you may have recalled that in videos 887 and 888, I installed this power feed on the Bridgeport Mill in the X axis and it's working great. Be sure and watch those two videos. I'll flash them on the screen right now if you haven't already seen them. But one thing needs to be done yet that I omitted or procrastinated on in regards to the installation and that is to mount the limit switches for safety. So let's take a look at how I'm going to do that. A very unusual job. No one will ever do this but you might find some of the techniques interesting and even entertaining. So let's begin. This will be a long video, so this is part one of a two-part video. Make sure you watch both parts. So in the earlier videos that I made, I had mounted the limit switch on the front side here, but in order to do that, I had to remove the scale here for my digital readout. Now, I can't do without this. I could do without this. But anyway, I'm going to flash on the screen now just a short little video clip from the earlier video where I had this mounted on the front like that but with this removed and of course the bracket is mounted on the, the angle here of the saddle so uh, I'm going to go about it a totally different way but let's take a look at that video right now Several people suggested mounting the DRO on the back side of the table over here and that is a possibility but it's just as big a job as doing this but the width of, of the scale here is two and a half inches. That takes up quite a bit of space back here and limits the travel by about an inch or two. However, what I'm doing now will also limit the travel, but probably by only an inch or an inch and a half. So that's the game plan. I'm going to mount a bracket on the back here. Actually, I'll call it a, a channel or a, a, well, I don't even know what, what you call it, but I have to construct one, make one, mill one, and mount it, and mount this, and it's going to be a pretty big job. So the switch itself will be mounted back here like this. That'll be a job drilling those holes, won't it? But remember, I have this bracket with an angle on it that is from the factory, and that would move it out like that, so that, that's not going to work. So I'm going to start by making the bracket. This will be the very first thing I do. That's a job in itself. But then in the end, this piece of square tubing will be mounted here with two screws, and I have to cut two channels in it like this. So that's a fairly big job. This is just a scrap piece, a test piece, a rehearsal, if you will. So let's make this. I won't show all the steps. I could just take this and straighten it out too. That would only take a minute. But you know that bend wouldn't fully straighten out. It would be kind of wrinkled and ugly. So I'm going to make a new one. I got nothing else to do. Well, while you were at the refrigerator loading up on fattening food, I did the layout already and it looks something like this. As a matter of fact, it looks exactly like this. So I'm going to take it to the bandsaw now and saw this out. I have already drilled and tapped these 832, I guess they were. No, no, they're 540. I did this the other day, actually. These are 540. These were metric but it's about the same size. This is 3 16 material, thicker than what I need, and I pre-drilled some holes here because I'm going to slot those out. I like to drill before I plunge cut, but in order to mill that, I believe I'll go ahead and mill these two first before I cut this out because I got something to clamp down and it'll be more awkward after it's cut out. So I'll go ahead and mill these into quarter inch slots for quarter twenty cap screws. You know a simple setup like this still takes ten minutes by the time you move the vise, but the work is squared. That's a quarter inch end mill and look at how I've got it clamped. 
And of course I'm straddling one of the T-slots so I don't mill into the table and pull a bubble. Well, I didn't have the camera on for the first slot, so I'll show you the second one. But one of the reasons I pre-drill holes is now I can plunge cut with an end mill that is not necessarily center cutting. Something weird happened. When I milled the first slot, this screw, this capture, would not even begin to fit in. So I took a little bit off each side. Didn't make any difference. Then I took the end mill out of the collet to check to see if I truly had a quarter inch end mill. And I did. And this is the offender right here. But I was going to mic the end mill, but I thought, I'll just check it in here. Well, I put it in the quarter inch hole, and boy, is it sloppy. Look, it goes easily into the uh, next size smaller and almost into that one. Well, then I examined it. Uh, I assume that it's probably been a regrind, but whoever did it did a good job, or it was just mislabeled, or uh, it was a reject from the factory. I don't know. Well, that cleaned up nice. It's ready to go. Now, I had to take some of these 540 3 quarter inch long bolts. They were the right length, but in order for the heads, which needed to be a filister head, to fit down into these counter bores, I did have to put them on the lathe and take off about 20,000. So now the round head is a filister head. So let me mount those four screws right onto the new bracket. As a sidebar here, this is the limit switch. So really it's two micro switches, very simple and uh, probably cheap to make because those I'm sure are standard micro switches so you can see two of them in there. So this will be mounted on the machine, and once it's mounted, this little cover goes on there. I don't like the looks of it, but that's just to protect the switches from coolant and chips. But it sure does rattle around, but I guess it's effective. Looking on the back side of the table, this is the approximate position of the switch. However, it will have to be spaced out about one inch with a spacer block. But now let's talk about the rails. That's the correct name for these rails. And the table is 32 inches long and this piece of one inch tubing, which I got from David, is exactly one inch, uh, 32 inches long. So I'm not sure of the exact position, but let's make the slot next. Several people had this bright idea, and it was a good one, to use a couple of magnets like this as the, uh, the stops. And when the table came uh, across, you know, it would trip the switch one way or the other. And that would be good, and it would be very quick to move them, but they would attract chips and uh, probably be a nuisance. You know, magnets around chips are a pain in the neck, but... Thank you for those ideas. That was, that was pretty good. Boy, I could save myself a lot of work. So in the rehearsal piece here, you can see that I made a 3 8 inch slot with an end mill. Kind of tough to get a deburred on the inside. But if you look at these uh, plunger stops here. Now this is all plastic, which I do not like. But there's a little T-nut there. And this is 3 8 or thereabouts. Sometimes I don't get it. Some of the Chinese stuff is metric in some places and uh, <laughs> imperial in the other. But, but anyway, the whole idea here is that this will slide back and forth in the slots and could be tightened and loosened at will and located wherever you want. 
and that's the game plan here. Now this is just a scrap piece and this is the actual rail 32 inches long. The center line is right here Mark CL as such but rather than make the slot all the way remember I do not have a a very long table on this mill so that's probably the maximum that I can cut so I'm going to do that I'm leaving about three inches here and about three inches here so the slot will be between my fingers and the same thing on both sides and that leaves me this space here to to put a bolt in to hold it to the table and I don't really need a bolt in the center. I mean, this is going to be overkill, really, because I noticed that uh, when the Chinese offer something like this, they call it a rail, and it's two pieces. No, it's one piece with a hinge in the middle. It probably weighs two ounces, and the whole idea is to make it lightweight and small enough that it'll fit in a package. This would require a special long cardboard tube or something to mail where if you if you cut it in half put a hinge on here you can fold it up and put it in any kind of mailer real real easily so that's the game plan you can see I already got a center line here and I, I don't really want to mill on this this is a weld this is welded tubing I don't really want to weld uh, mill on the weld it might be hard and, and troublesome and so on but alright now I'll get this set up and we'll mill I will mill this short piece here and then flip it around in the vise. I'm going to just hold this in the vise and then mill the other end. But I like to drill a couple holes as I did in that other piece right here. I like to drill some holes to get started. So I'll probably drill a couple, oh, smaller than three eighths, maybe a couple here and here on, on each end. And it just makes it easier to plunge. I said that before. Okay, here's the setup. A 3 8 end mill and I've already located the center of the one inch tube and I have several holes drilled in here, starter hole and I will be milling between this white line and this white line or should I say my two thumbs I've got a little support out here probably do not need it and when this side is done I'll just shift it around and do the other end I will not show both okay let's plunge Okay, this is the first time I actually use the Weaver power feet. Can be real nice. Okay, I'm done except for deburring, but I want to point one thing out here that some of you probably thought about, but some maybe did not think about. The way I am doing this, holding the tubing in a vise, tends to, of course, pinch the tubing. So as I'm making this cut all the way through, I probably am pinching the pipe a little bit. Now luckily my cut is light enough and all of that and the tubing is strong enough but let's just say this was real thin wall tubing instead it might have come loose in the vise. Do you understand what I'm saying? So a, another alternate way of doing this would be to not use the vise but to hold this directly on the table probably with a clamp. On each end and then that couldn't happen just a thought there it is 32 inches of beauty and the stops here slide and move easily I've got it marked here it'll take a five millimeter wrench I'd like to put some kind of wing nut or something so I don't always have to get the wrenches out 
but the reality is I'll probably keep them in a position like this 90% of the time just as a safety but if I'm doing a specific job of course I can move them up to wherever it would be necessary so I'm reasonably satisfied so far and I've already drilled one fourth inch holes on both ends all the way through and those are the mounting screws and I still have the aluminum block to cut out and drill holes through. Now this could be wood, it, it, it doesn't have to be any valuable material, it could be hardwood, could be plastic like PVC, but I do happen to have aluminum that is the right size pretty much, so that's what I'm going with. Okay, the spacer block that was red in color just a few minutes ago has been cut down and drilled, and that's what it will look like. And with that in mind, that's enough fun for today. The video is long enough, so this is the end of part one. Be sure and watch part two, where I proceed to mount the stop, the switch, the rail, and all of that on the back side of the Bridgeport table. That'll be a fun job. Actually, that'll be the hardest part of the whole kit and caboodle, so make sure you watch that. And I'll see you in the next video. Now there's a lot of still pictures to watch, so check those out as well. And thanks for watching.